We have come as far as verse four in chapter 14, but let's read down. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be uh, also. Verse four is where we left off. Then Jesus said, whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him wonderfully, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it will satisfy us. And Jesus said unto him, have I been so long a time with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because... I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So this passage now picking up on what the Lord had said to his disciples about the Father's house. Told him he was going away, chapter 13, where I'm going, you can't come. Where are you going? Peter says, you know, I'm coming, I'll lay down my life. He said, really, you're gonna deny me tonight uh, three times before the rooster crows, but let not your heart be troubled. It's in light of that humanity that he says it. You believe in God, believe in also me and my father's house, many mansions and so forth. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. And whither I go, verse 4, you know, and the way you know. Thomas, in verse 5, contradicts him immediately. Jesus says, where I'm going, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas takes the same word and says, we don't know. We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Now, look, we pick on Thomas a lot. I think he says that, and by the way, Thomas says, we we don't know, you know, how can we know? So they must have huddled and they said to Thomas, you ask him, you ask him, you know, just, and Thomas said, we, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And I believe he's asking in sincerity. I think they all feel the heaviness on the heart of Christ as he said, I'm leaving, I'm going. Now he had spoken to them about heaven, the father's house. And I believe they, they believe in their hearts, as we do, that heaven's a reality. How far away it is, how do we get there? You know, we're hoping to go in the rapture, but how far away is it? What dimension is it in? Is it above uh, the atmosphere? Uh, I've been looking up at that stupid balloon all week and I haven't seen it. <laughs> is it uh, above the stratosphere or the stellar heavens? Is it in another fifth, sixth, or, you know, six dimensions measurable, four or not? Is it in another dimensionality? We don't know. We will know when we get there, and it'll be better than everything we understand now. We do know this, however far away heaven is, because he's gonna end by challenging them about prayer. However far away heaven is, we can hear from there. 
Elijah, the great prophet, said that when he was at Horeb, that the Lord there let a great wind come that broke the rocks. And that was the kind of ministry he had, but he said the Lord's voice was not in the wind. He said, then there was an earthquake that shook the mountain, and he was used to calling down fire, those kind of things. He said the Lord's voice was not in the earthquake. And then a fire, he had called it down from heaven. And the Lord's voice was not in the fire. And then it says, but behold, a still, small voice. That's how he speaks to us. So wherever heaven is, we have the capacity to hear from that place. And wherever heaven is, we also are heard there. If my people who are called by thy, my, my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. So wherever it is, it's near enough in whatever dimension to hear us as we pray, all of you. You know, to hear our hearts, even if we don't verbalize, to hear our voice when we pray. And Jesus has now kind of put new light on heaven, this place, the Father's house, the many mansions. And then he said, and I'm going. Where I go, you know the way you know. Thomas said, well, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? You're talking about heaven. I don't even know how, how are we going to get there? You know, how, how do we get there? And of course, it brings forth a sublime statement from Jesus. We don't know the way, really. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He didn't say no man comes to the Father's house. That's what they're thinking of. You know, sometimes we think of heaven, streets of gold, walls of jewels, we do all that. But in the center of that is the Lord, and he gives light to the whole thing. You know, if you go visit a friend or you're, sons or your daughters are having problems or you go to see your mom or your grandpa and you get to the house and uh and nobody's home and you can't get anybody to answer the door and you're worried you have a key open up you can't find them so you know do you walk around the house and look at everything oh yeah there's that there's that bathroom again there's this thing no no what makes it what it is is because there's a presence there there's a family there's a father he uses father 14 times in this chapter more than, this is the father chapter more than any other chapter in the Bible. And he doesn't say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the father's house but by me. He says, no man comes to the father himself but by me. Now, that can be a little intimidating. I've never stood in God's presence before. In, in heaven, in reality, I've, I've never seen him in his glory. You know, neither have these disciples. Because then we can think, well, you know, I've, I've just been struggling. I'm, I'm compromised. I'm involved in a relationship I shouldn't be involved in, or I'm watching things I shouldn't be watching, or I'm snorting things I shouldn't be snorting. I'm gambling, taking the family's money to Las Vegas or to the stock market. It's different kind of gambling. And uh, I don't want to get raptured and hear him say, how'd you get here? You know, am I really ready to step into the presence of a holy God? How? How? And Jesus answers that. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And by the way, the Greek, it's emphatic all the way through. So a way you could understand it, the emphasis would be, I encounter distinction to all others am the way. I encounter distinction to all others am the truth. I encounter distinction to all others am the life. And then the tenses on the, the last, last part of the verse are, no man has ever come, no man is coming, no man ever will come to the Father, but by me. He makes it that exclusive and that simple. And I don't know about you guys, I need something simple. He doesn't say, I am a way. He doesn't say, 
there's any way. He doesn't say you need another way. He doesn't say choose a way. There's many ways. Pick the way that's right for you. He doesn't say any of that. He says I am. It's one of the last great I am statements in the New Testament, like the burning bush. I am the way. You want to know the way? I determines all of Christianity. The first word, I. All that we believe and all that we hope for is woven into that word. I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father. Well, that's, that's narrow. People, you know, say that. That's just, you know, there's only one way. He says you must, not only don't you don't need another way, you must forsake all other ways or you will be lost. You're here this morning and maybe you don't know Christ. I didn't say it. He said it. Well, I don't think that's true. Well, you want me to believe you or you want me to believe him? Because I'm hoping to go to his house, not your house. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do it the way he says to do it. Well, that's narrow. That's narrow. And in this world, narrow is not good. It's not tolerance. In this world we live in, Open-mindedness, broad-mindedness is good. You're supposed to accept everybody's lifestyle, everybody's morality, everybody's politics, everybody's convictions, everybody's, everybody's everything. And if you do that, you're open-minded. That's not the sign of an open mind. That's the sign of a feeble mind. When you can't make up your mind and you can't decide what's right, and you can't lead yourself, you know, in a certain direction. When you can't say, I don't know about all this other stuff, but I believe this. That's narrow in a wonderful sense. Instead of open-minded in a foolish, feeble sense. And you like narrowness. You like it. You go to the drugstore. You don't want the druggist saying, you know, well, you're supposed to get these little pink, you know, synthroid caps, but I don't really like this blue color, so I think I'm going to give you a bunch of those. Let me know what you think. I don't want to hear that. Right? I don't want to be coming in for a landing on a plane and hear the guy say, you know, I, I saw this in the movie, and I always wanted to try this, so I think I'm going to try to land with, with, with the wheels not down. I don't want to hear that. I want him to be narrow-minded. You know, I don't want to be in the operating room ready to go under some, you know, profilol and fentanyl and hear the guy at the list minute say, you know, it, it, we got to take out his appendix, but I always wanted, I think I'm going to get a kidney while I'm in there. <laughs> Do you want to hear that? So is it wrong to have very specific information about heaven and how to get there? Because that trumps all of those other things. All of them. And what he's saying here is heaven it is open to anyone who wants to come um, and that he himself is the way to get there. And he's saying to us that heaven is without distinction but it's not without exception. Heaven is without distinction. Anybody can come. Anybody. Saul of Tarsus was murdering the church, making them, you know, blaspheme the name of Jesus. Anybody can come to heaven. It's without extinction, but without distinction, but it's not without exception. Because it's except those who try to come another way. There's only one way. And I don't know about you guys, that's narrow-minded. Well, I'm thankful there is a way. That's the amazing thing. Not that it's narrow. The amazing thing is there is a way. Not many ways. A way for me to get to heaven. Look at me. I'm going to heaven. I'm, you, you can do what you want with your own heart and mind. I'm going to heaven for one reason. God's son died on the cross in my place. I am the way, he says. Then he says, I am the truth, singular, in, in 
distinction to all others, very narrow. It's truth and deception. That's all there is. Jesus doesn't apologize for saying this. Well, you say, well, that's dogmatic. Well, all truth is dogmatic. Well, you say that's intolerant. Well, tr truth is unyielding. You say that's exclusive. Well, truth is. You say that's arrogant. No, altering the truth is arrogance. Not having the truth. John, in chapter 8, said, that, quoting Jesus, he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So there is the way, not a way. There is the truth, not many truths. And then he says, I am the life in distinction to all others, the life, not a form of life, not a life force, not a life, the life, no other to be sought. And people look, we're surrounded with a mass of humanity that is seeking life. And they think if I have this, I'll be happy. If I have a Tesla, I'll be happy. If I get this paid off, I'll be happy. If I marry this person, I'll be happy. If I make my first million, I'll be happy. And, and the world is full of miserable people because none of that is life. Then, you know, you can meet somebody living in a hut somewhere that's found Jesus and they're happy as a lark. They found life. And this is just a vestibule. They know they're going to go into the mansion. They found life. Jesus says, I am the life. What's all the rest of it? It doesn't make any sense. You and I know that if we don't have him, if we don't have that blessed hope. I am the way. There's no other way. You must forsake all other ways. I am the truth. There's only that. Everything else is deception. I am the life. The life, there is no other life because only this life is eternal. This is the only life that should be sought. And in fact, don't seek life, seek him. Don't seek the stream, seek the fountain. And he says here he's not just interested in bringing us by the way, the truth, and the life to the Father's house, but to the Father himself. And again, God Almighty, that can be intimidated intimidating. So he says then in verse seven, if, now that if is an if and you, and you don't really, if you had known me, they don't realize who he is. You should have known my father also. And from henceforth, from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. You think heaven's far away? You think you gotta wait a long time to get there? You think, what am I gonna do when I see the Father? You don't have to wait, because he's closer than you think. He's standing before you. You've seen him. We're told in Colossians chapter one that Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. We're told in Hebrews chapter one that Jesus, that who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and the upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, died on the cross, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. John would tell us in the beginning of his own gospel in chapter one, verse 18, he would say, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the heart of the father, he hath declared him or he hath displayed him. Nobody's seen God, but Jesus, you look at him, he's displayed God. He's saying to these guys, you don't have to wait till you get to heaven. This is not, I'm, you know, I'm not just bringing to you the father's house. You'll get there to the house, but you don't have to wait till you get to the house to see the father. Because I'm with you now. And he who has seen me has seen the Father. Now, they don't get it. Now, Philip says to him, Lord, show us. So they must have huddled again. Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus doesn't go, 
Ay, vey, you know, what is it with you guys, you know? Uh, he's content to keep working this because he knows we're going to sit here 2,000 years later and when we share Jesus Christ with our lost friends, we're going to say, you know, the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's going to know how important that verse would be in all of our lives. So he's slow. He's investing in them. When they are born again and filled with the Spirit, all of these things will come to light. Philip says to him, Lord, well, then show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Is he expecting to see what Moses saw, the inner part of God? Is he expecting him? You know, what is he expecting? And Jesus said to him, have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, that the Father is in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. The ideas are from the Father. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the work. So he's saying to them, you know, you don't have to wait till then. You can see the Father there. Look, Philip says, well, well, then show us and we'll be satisfied. That's the hard cry of every man. Show, I need something. Dis display what I'm missing to me. Show us the Father, Philip says, we'll be satisfied. Well, then show us. And that should be all of our heart cry, by the way. Lord, I need to see more of you. Lord, reveal more of yourself. I need to see you. Well, Jesus said, you know what? I'm here. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me... You've seen the Father's gentleness. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father's compassion. If you've seen me, you've seen God's grace. If you've seen me, you've seen God's love. If you've seen me, you've seen that God is not around, uh, afraid to reach out and touch the unclean, the leper, when the religious world will turn away. If you've seen me, you've seen that God is not at all hesitant to call a harlot to himself or a drunkard. If you've seen me, you've seen me weeping. You've seen God weeping at the tomb of Lazarus. You've seen my tears. You've seen my broken heart. That's the Father that's in the Father's house. If you've seen me, you've seen God girding himself, taking a basin, getting on his knees, and washing your feet. If you've seen me, you've seen God. Because the, you know, his glory, his power, and his majesty going to his house can be intimidating. Jesus says, yeah, you're not at the house yet. But you can see the Father now. You can know who's going to be there because I'm sitting right in front of you. You think all of these things need to take place, but here's the truth, Philip. The Father happens to be sitting right across the table from you, as he's willing to do with us. I don't know how many times I've sat somewhere quiet, and he was just sitting that close, making himself known not a long way off. And he says here that his words in verse 10, the words that I speak, the Ramada, the truth I've been telling you, speaking into your life, and he's still singular there, so he's answering Philip initially, but then when he goes to verse 11, he says, believe me, and there it's an imperative and it's plural, so he's speaking to all of us, all of them and all of us today. You must keep on believing that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else keep believing me for the very work's sake. And these guys saw those works. They understood the, the power that he demonstrated. They, they were eyewitnesses. Look, there were others who turned away who didn't believe. But they saw that, and they at least had that context. He says, the words that you've heard from me are the words of the Father. They're from heaven. I was spoken of myself. He's not a, a robot and God was controlling him. He stood in each one of these things 
in complete cooperation, but exercising his own will. And he said, the words that you've heard me speak, you, it's the Father's words. The things you've seen me do, it's the Father's words. In fact, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You don't need to say anymore, show us the Father. Remarkable. And then he says, verily, verily, truly, truly. There's all, always a great emphasis when he does that. Um, verily, verily, he says, I say unto you, plural again, he that believeth is believing on me. The works, plural, that I do shall he do also, and of course, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. There's a verse that we all, you know, you know, verily, verily, I'm telling you, anybody who believes in me is going to, they're going to do the works that I do. In fact, they're going to do greater works than I do. And we all sit here and feel, well, great, I guess I didn't get in here. And he says, the reason they're going to do greater works is because I'm going to go to the Father. And we think, what does that mean? How can he be telling you and I and the apostles there they're going to do greater works? You know, they did some miracles. If you go through the Gospels, there's 36 miracles outlined. The majority of them are healings, not all. And there were people that believed. We don't, but we don't know if the guy who was let down through the roof, the crippled, he, he received what Christ said to him then. Did he go to heaven when he died? Lazarus, who was risen from the dead, had to die again. The woman with the blood flow that Jesus cured, did she end up in heaven? We don't know those things. The Pharisees and Sadducees watched the miracles and said, you're doing this by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. That's who's doing these miracles. So the, 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 the works themselves were, were only to bear witness to the word that was spoken. It is the word of God and has been through the ages. When it is spoken, it's never the person speaking it but it's the word of someone else that's being spoken. And Jesus says greater works. Because look, in the book of Acts, they did healing, those were the miracles. But in the book of Acts, they never fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. In the book of Acts, none of them ever walked on the water. Paul would rather have done that than been in the shipwreck. In the book of Acts, nobody rebuked the wind and the sea. So is he saying, that greater those kind of works? I don't think so. I don't think so because on the day of Pentecost, Peter preaches 3,000 people are saved in one day. Jesus hadn't seen that. 5,000 saved another day. The, multi the multitudes coming to Christ, the church growing. And it says here, Jesus said, I'm saying that to you because I go to the Father. That's why it's going to happen. Because when Jesus ascends to the Father, the Holy Spirit is shed forth. And Pentecost begins, and he says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and Calvary, Philly, the uttermost ends of the earth, right? <laughs> Jesus, when he spoke, never spoke from two places at one time. He was here in a human frame. But now Jesus speaks from thousands of places at one time, through you, through me, through our kids, through our friends, through pastors, through nurses, through doctors. And when we get to heaven, the vast majority of people in our Father's house that will be there will not be there because of stadium evangelism or a Billy Graham crusade. The vast amount of people there will be there because one person, a friend, a son, a daughter, a classmate, shared the love of Jesus with them. And it has been a greater work because it's gone all around the globe and it's still happening today. Now, he says to them then, when he ties all this up, 
And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will, notice I do, the reason that the Father may be glorified in the Son. He doesn't say, here's a magic formula, you know, because we see some guys, you know, do that, like, whatever you pray in my name, and some of them think, well, you just have to give it some emphasis. You know, you, you, you can almost do it with me. In the name of Jesus, you know, you, you, you put a little chutzpah behind it, and then the miracle has to happen. That's not what this is saying. He says, whatever you pray in my name, I'll grant that, that the Father might be glorified in me. Not so your own program can be glorified, not so you can get the attention. There's a way to pray. And he says, if you ask anything, now some of your translations, because some of the manuscripts, if you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. Again, he's doing, and look, as, as we look at this, by the way, some people want to say, well, Jesus said you pray to the Father. You only pray to the Father. And then Jesus says, if you ask me anything in my name, seek me, you'll find me. And some say, oh, Holy Spirit, and everybody else goes, what's he doing? This? And look, there's one God. He's three distinct persons, but he's one God. And no one's wrong in the way they approach him, the one God. It isn't like when we're praying, one person saying, Father, Father, and up in heaven, the three of them are saying, well, that's two for me, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's one for you, you know. The Holy Spirit's lagging behind. No, no. The, the idea is here, you come and you pour out your heart. There are greater works to do. There is my Father's home in heaven. Don't let your heart be troubled. That's where he started. You believe in God, believe also in me, my Father, so are many mansions. If, it were, if that wasn't true, I've told you, I'd never let you have a false hope. You've got to stop this heart trouble. And I'm going to go prepare a place for you. If I do, I'll come again and receive you to myself. Where I'm going, you know the way. We don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? I am the way. Remarkably simple, profound, and powerful. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man has ever come, is coming, or ever will come to the Father but by me. And if you had known me, you'd have known the Father, and henceforth you've seen him. Philip says, well, well we're not sure, but show us, then we'll be satisfied. Have I been so long a time with you, and hast thou, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And he, he, he then displays, look, the Father, if you've seen me, you've seen him. It, it isn't intimidating. You don't have to wait till you get to the Father's house to see the Father. Here I am. You see me weeping. You see my tenderness. You see my care. You see me feeding the hungry. You see me washing your feet. You don't have to wait to get to heaven. And understand this. If you believe, you keep on believing the works that I do, you will do also, in fact, greater works than these. The reason, because I go to the Father. The Holy Spirit will be poured out. And if you ask anything in my name, you can have it. Whatever you seek me for, if it glorifies the Father, if it's kept in the proper context, you know you can have that. And, and how wonderful. Look, I, I remember an old bumper sticker. It used to say, why pray when you can worry? <laughs> right? He ends this whole section saying the answer to heart trouble is prayer. There's only one way. It's not complicated. There's only one truth. There's only one life. And if you ask anything in my name, don't let your heart be troubled. Seek me. Right? And how often, I think, do we forfeit that? Think of the old song, Oh, what peace. We often forfeit, Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. My encouragement to you as his children, born again today, 
Sit with these things. Look over them. Let him speak to your heart. He's right on the other side of the table. He'll break bread with you. God Almighty. Waiting to bring you to his house, which is prepared. But he will be the highlight of that place. Those of you here this morning that have never come to Jesus, we want to give you that opportunity this morning because you've come here. And Jesus said these words are the words of Almighty God. There's a way. You can get to heaven and you can do it today. There's a way. There's not lots of ways. It's not your own way. It's not choose a way. You know, a lot of great ways. Pick your, you know, there's none of that. There is a way. Right? And people say that's narrow. If somebody told me there is a cure for cancer, one, people would be standing in line around the block. More phenomenal than that is there is a way for me to go to heaven. I'm not amazed that there's only one way. I'm amazed there is a way that I can get there. If you'd never come to Christ, you need to do that. Well, I don't agree. It doesn't matter what you agree with me. I didn't say it. He said it. Do you agree with him or you don't agree with him? That's up to you. But if, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, forget about church, forget about religion. It isn't any of that. It's a person. It's him. That's where truth is. That's where life is. That's where the road to heaven is. The way. And you can come to him today as we sing the last song. We'll give opportunity. If you want to accept Christ and make him your savior today, it means you're willing to forsake all other ways. Drugs ain't going to make you happy. Sex ain't going to make you happy. Money ain't going to make you happy. Power ain't going to make you happy. There's a way. And if you're willing to turn from everything else today and turn to Jesus, all I ask as we sing the last song, get out of your seat and come down and stand right here, right in front of everybody. Right in front of everybody and say, I'm tired of it. I got nothing. There's a way. Is there a way for me? Heaven's a reality. I don't want to wait till I take my last breath to find out. I mean, is it, if it's a reality, is God want anything to do with me? Yeah, yeah, he came and he walked among us so we could see who he was. And for you this morning, that single way is here beckoning your heart. There's a way. So as we sing the last song, we'll ask you to come. Let's stand together. Let's pray. I'm sure if a, a friend brought you today, they're going to say, come on, come on, I'll go down with you. Because Jesus said, if you're willing to acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my Father and all the angels in heaven. If you confess me before men, and I know the tenses, but it begins at a point. So let's bow our hearts, let's pray. If you brought somebody today, they're standing next to you, and you know they're not saved, be praying for them. Because it says you'll be heard if it's, you're doing it for the glory of God. Father, I know you've overheard. We look to you. And Lord, we are still growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, these things deepen. And we know that even in the ages to come, we'll be learning of your grace, of your mercy. But today, Lord, we pray you let us take these things to heart as your individual sons and daughters. Let it cause deep and beautiful communion between, Lord, you and ourselves. Let us sit with our Father now long before we get to his house. And Lord, for those that are here that haven't come, that are still trying to find life out in the world, they're still trying to figure out what's true. They're still trying to figure out what path to take. Lord, reveal yourself to them today. Draw them by your spirit, Lord. Convince them of your love and of your forgiveness. Your word says you add to the church daily such as should be saved. You do it, Lord. We trust you with that, Lord Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen.